Hey everyone, Kristen A here for Card Player TV with breaking news on the 2009 Card Player Player of the Year race. With the recent elimination of Yevgeny Timoshenko and Cornell Simpen in the WPT 5 Diamond Doyle Brunson Classic, Eric Baldwin has been officially named the POI winner. We caught up with him just after he learned the news. You are officially the winner. Did you breathe a sigh of relief when everyone texted you letting you know that Yevgeny busted? Well, the first text or two I got, I, I made sure that they weren't bluffing me and uh, or slow rolling me on, he, uh, on him busting. But then the text started pouring in, and I realized that he probably busted, and I probably had it won, and what an amazing feeling. Now, you had some backup plans. Had Yevgeny and, and Cornell Simpson made it through today, can you tell me what your plans were? Yeah, there's a one-way flight to Atlantic City tonight that I have a ticket for that I will not be boarding, <laughs> thankfully, because as beautiful as Atlantic City is, I don't really want to go there in, in uh, December. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's start and talk about your year. You kind of started out with some online caches, and then the big live one was at the Venetian Deep Stack Extravaganza main event. Tell me about winning that one. Uh, yeah, it was a real slow start to the year. I uh, had like a min cash at the PCA. And at the start of the year, it was always like a pipe dream. It would be awesome to go after player of the year, but I didn't do anything for a while. And um, then in April, uh, the Venetian main event, I ended up winning the $2,500 tournament there for a lot of points. And it was a really cool night because the same night, my friends Justin Young and Shannon Shore were both at the final table of the WPT Championship at the Bellagio. I didn't even play the 25K here at Bellagio. And uh, so they both final tabled that, and I ended up winning the Venetian, and it was it was a really cool night, and things just kind of went from there. And they had busted in time to come over and celebrate their cash as well as your win. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh those guys all came over afterwards, you know, after busting without, without winning, it's, it's tough to be in a good mood or anything, but those guys came over and had some drinks and supported me and it was awesome. Now tell me about this summer. You won your first World Series of Poker bracelet in the $1,500 buy-in at Nolan event. Now that field was huge. How did you wade your way through? You know, it, Events like that, you just got to put yourself in a position to win enough times, and then one of the times something's going to happen. Uh, I, I was something like 0 for 15 coming into that event. I hadn't even cashed a World Series event, and it was just just my time. You know, things worked out. I found good spots. Um, yeah, with my style of play, you just put yourself in the position to win enough times, and if you keep putting yourself there, sometimes it's going to work out. Absolutely. And then a couple days later, third place in a 10K event. Tell me tell me about that one. That was insane because uh, I'd get interviewed after I won the bracelet and, and people would ask me, well, what's your next challenge? I said, honestly, it's going to be to not have like a hangover from winning a bracelet. It'd be real easy to just cruise, be happy, satisfied with winning a bracelet and, and not play your A game. So I was like super focused on making sure I still played well. And so then a week later, the 10 K pot limit hold'em event, I find myself back at the final table and it's kind of like, wow. And, uh, actually had the chip lead three handed, thought I was going to win another bracelet, but had a semi cooler hand, but, but that was, that was amazing also. So is that is that when you took the player of the year lead? Was it after those two caches at the WSOP? It was it was really close. Like I think after I took the third in the 10K pot limit hold'em, I took the lead momentarily. But then Vitaly Lunkin um, right. mm -hmm. made the 50K final table in the horse event and retook the lead. So it was never really reported that I had the lead. But at that point, I saw I was within striking distance and uh, kind of dedicated myself for uh, the rest of the year to, to go after it. Was it the Caesars final table that you overtook Vitelli? I think the one that put me in first place that when it got noticed was uh, a 1K prelim at the Legends of Poker in, okay. in Los Angeles. Gotcha. Now, you did have the lead for a while, and I remember you came on the scoop. They're like, oh, you're a shoe in for player of the year, and you're like, I don't know. And then you have Guinea Timoshenko, who had won the WPT championship. Then he retook the lead. Were you super motivated after that when you, when you saw him get in your number one spot? 
I was motivated the night I found out he won it. I was depressed. I was I made day two of that tournament also, so you know I had a shot to score a a, a whole lot of points in that tournament also. Uh, I was at the Borgata playing live tournaments, and uh, I was actually eating late night dinner at the cafe with my buddies Mike Katz and and <laughs> Jesse Yaganuma and. Um, I got the text that he had won it and I was kind of like demoralized, you know, cause I was in first and he's such a, he's such a good player. It sucks to lose the lead, especially to a player like that can, that can play, uh, that can win anything he plays. So it was kind of demoralizing, but I knew I was still in the race and, and it just took me a while to get over it and get back motivated to take the lead again. And the Arua Poker Classic, that was the, the lead changer, right? Yeah, yeah, the Aruba Poker Classic was great. I I love that stop on the poker tour. It's an amazing island, like laid back atmosphere, just just an awesome time. And uh, was fortunate enough to play well and run well in the tournament. And took fourth place. Played bad at the final table, but it was enough to put me back in the lead. So once you took that lead, now tell me what the last few months has been like you have made 17 final tables this year and no matter what tournament was playing that day if it had poi qualifying points you were playing tell me <laughs> tell me what it's been like for you oh it's been a grind um yeah after after the world series i just like mapped out my schedule to make sure i was giving myself the op like the best chance at winning the poi and um so I've been playing basically every day. If I haven't been playing, there's either nothing going on or it's a travel day to somewhere where there is something going on. So it's definitely been a grind. And people ask me if I get burned out. And my answer is not really. I mean, you show up, you play a game, it's fun, and there's nine interesting characters at your table. So I've I've had fun with it and 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 look at it more as fun than than work and and that's really helped me stay fresh all the way throughout the second half of the year i think it's been amazing how hard you worked and how much you wanted the player of the year and playing every single day now that you've got this award for 2009 are you going for it for 2010 uh, I'm not making any promises on that. I'm, uh, I'm going to go to the PCA in the Bahamas because it's, it's such a huge tournament. And I'm going to enjoy my, my time off over Christmas and New Year's. And it, I'm, I'm going to play like I did last year and definitely grind through the World Series and try and pick up another bracelet or two and uh, see where I'm at after the World Series. And if I'm in position to do it again, I mean, it's so much fun. Like I love the competition. If I'm in, if I'm in striking distance again, I'll probably make a run at it again. But obviously, um, it's not something you can just do year after year. So luck will have to be on my side again. All right. Well, congratulations. And now I know you've had a ton of support along the way in the form of your own poker crew. So you guys have been there along the way. What has it been like seeing him grind? I mean, you guys, you guys have been wonderful supporters. What's tell tell me what it's been like. Come on, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're really proud of Eric. He's really been working hard this year, and uh, he's really done well. I mean, I can't say much more. Now, Shannon, you've had a ton of success here at the Bellagio, and you were kind of of the group, you know, one of the first people to really step out and break through. What's it been like to see to see your really good friend do the same? Uh, it's been great, especially since I haven't been playing much. I've kind of been living uh, through oh, Eric, yeah, <laughs> and... Uh, it's it's just uh, been a lot of fun. He deserves it. He's a great player. Mike, what are you guys going to do tonight? Well, my, uh, tonight, I don't know what we're going to do tonight. I was hoping that Eric was going to be flying back to New Jersey because I'm just flying back also. So I want to give him a little bit more sweat. But <laughs> he somehow faded. So I don't know. We're going to be drinking a lot. <laughs> uh, not much. I just want to, everyone to know how good a player he is. I know a lot of people... Uh, probably out of the loop a little bit, don't know who he is, but uh, I really hope that uh, this year he's going to put his name on the map for a real long time. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, guys. Congratulations once again to Eric Baldwin. You've made $1.5 million in tournament winnings this year, made 17 final tables, and won four titles, including your first World Series of Poker bracelet. You've worked harder than any other player this year, and you deserve the 2009 Player of the Year title. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Chris Yarnett for Card Player TV.